and welcome to my channel. This is BMW Ninja at BMW Ninja Game Channel. Today we're looking at another video of my season setup. As you see here, I put it the magic. Like I told you before, I like playing with the, the suckier teams because the whole point of a dynasty is to build them up and also play with the T-Wolves. They did so-so with the players that we had. The teams, the players I like to put on my teams, the types of players I like to add to my teams are like I need a point guard that can pass the ball and they can shoot from the top of the key. I need a power forward in the center that blocks and rebounds. I don't need them to score or do anything like that. I use that for my shooting guard and my small forward. As you see here, I got a pretty young team for the Magic. Uh, also created myself. And that's another thing I like to do in my season. I create myself, my brother, and my friends, and other NBA players that I like to have in the in the game while I'm playing. Look at my Timberwolves lineup. Rubio, Hardaway, Wiggins. Uh, it's a young team. I traded away Nikolai. So he was getting kind of up in age. So I try to keep the team young and let them go together. This team needs a lot of work, but they did a lot better than my Magic team. As you see, this is the lineup right here. No real big names on here. Nick Stackas pretty nice that's what I call him Tim Hardaway Jr. he fell off hopefully he'll find his way back next year but we're gonna look at the awards to see how who stacked up pretty nice KD as you see he won the MVP award uh, my brother won the rookie of the year playing for the Golden State Warriors uh, we got Reggie Jackson at the six man Anthony Davis, of course, as Defensive Player of the Year. Then we roll into Most Improved Player, Matthew Wesley Matthews. And then here you go with the uh, NBA First Team. No real surprise, except there's no LeBron on the first team. Got beat out by Paul George, who had a crazy year this year on the game, somehow, even though he was injured. We got 13. First team, defensive team. Look at the first name, Kevin Durant, defensive player. That kind of shocked me. And second team, you go. First team, rookie. Bunch of the creative people with Jabari Parker and Marcus Smart. Second team is Julius Randle, KD, KJ McDaniel, Joel McVie, Andrew Wiggins. Coach of the Year, of course, David Black with LeBron. That's enough of the awards. Let's look at the standings <clears throat> or oh, stats. Not that. KD, scoring champion, again. Shot almost 50% from the field, 40% from threes. On this game, this year, he played all 82 games. Too bad he's not doing that this year in real life. Because they really do need him. Quick look of the top eight. And I wonder, how, how, do, how does my lead stack up to y'all's lead? Is KD number one? Did he win the MVP award with you with your in your season? As you look at my Northwest Division, you might see a team that don't belong there. Milwaukee Bucks. I swapped them out with Memphis Grizzlies because it makes more sense to have Memphis playing in the East. If you look at the map... Memphis is closer to the Eastern teams anyway. The Warriors ran a division. Them and OKC had a great year. Toronto is playing in no one's land right now. So they won that division. Cleveland, and you see Memphis again. Even though they moved, it was still a tough, it, that made that division really tough. Don't let the numbers fool you. I watched a couple of the games. It was a pretty good matchup. Miami ran the division. Even though they didn't have LeBron, Hassan Whiteside made a big difference. And you got OKC, 65 and 17, pretty dominant throughout the whole year, along as uh, Golden State Warriors. So, like I said, the only big difference was the, the Grizzlies playing in the East and Milwaukee playing in the West. I mean, it, it, it gave it a different feel. 
And now, like I said before, we're in, we in the playoffs. And this is how my playoff tree looks. The games I've been watching are the Trailblazers and Kings, Spurs and Rockets, Bulls, Raptors, Pacers, Hawks. And you see number one against number eight, Heat and Grizzlies. Even though they had that record below 500, I'm pretty sure the Heat wish they were playing the Celtics instead of playing the Grizzlies. Because that's basically a buy for the Cavaliers. The series have been kind of competitive. The Hawks are kind of overmatched. The Bulls and Raptors series been pretty good. Trailblazers King series has been a total wash. And the Rockets have been running the Spurs up and down the court relentless. So pretty sure Duncan's probably done. Ginobili's probably done. It's going to be a whole new look Spurs team after this season. So we're going to jump into a game. We're going to go with the Spurs Rockets. Game 3. Like I said, the Rockets have been running the Spurs. So, this is Season 1, Episode 1 of my playoffs. We'll be doing videos of my whole playoff run until the finals and until it's done and until NBA 2K16 comes out. Uh, we'll continue talking about wish, the wish list or things that we hopefully want to see in 2K16. So uh, tell me how you feel. Tell me. How your season ran? How, how, who won the MVP in your league? Who finished out on top? Who had the best record? Who had? Was there any big trades? I just want to know how the game plays out on so many different platforms. I mean, leave, leave a comment. Let me know. Like, share. Tell your friends. Subscribe. We only getting started. Like I said before, this is stimulation for your simulation. I am your host. They smell blood. Win this one, and the series is over. All the momentum, everything is going in their favor right now. Sounds like a guy who was speaking from experience. Four championships, I know a little bit. Thanks for joining us here in the 2K Sports Studio. Almost time now to go out to Kevin Harlan. Take it away, Kev. Hello everyone and welcome to game three of this Western Conference first round series. We're 2-0 so far and we'll see if the home court advantage holds sway. Kevin Harlan here with Clark Kellogg and Steve Kerr. We've got San Antonio facing the Houston Rockets. You look at Houston. They've been dominating this series, winning the first two games on the road with a win here. They'd taken almost insurmountable three game to none lead. Yeah, they would basically lock up this series if they win tonight. 3-0 would be insurmountable. They've played so well in winning the first two games on the road. 
So if they're anywhere near that good here today, with the advantage of playing in their own building, I think they're going to be in great shape. Well, you'd have to think so, Steve. I mean, they have a major upper hand in the series at this point. The crowd can feel it and sense it, too. They know what this game can do for their guys, and they're as keyed up as the players are. And the starting group for the Spurs. Down low, it's Duncan and Splitter. In the backcourt, Parker and Ginobili. And it's Leonard in at the small fold. Duncan, and he throws it down hard with one hand. Boy, just a little too lax with the effort defensively on that possession. Well, I'd say that pretty much sums it up. You're right, Clark. Yeah, but what a finish, guys. I mean, look at him taking it up high. Now, here's Beverly. Harden outside. Rocket six. On loads. Jump shot is good that time. He presents a defender with a serious challenge. Always. San Antonio with the ball. They look to start a new streak after losing on Monday. They came out flat that night and could never really get it going. Not their best effort for sure, Clark. No, I agree with you. And I thought maybe they could find somebody to come off the bench and give them a spark. But it didn't happen. Down to five on the shot clock. Here's Leonard. And it's good in the assist by Parker. Assist. Leonard's got his first bucket of the night. Well, nice way there to get your first basket of the game. And so just over a minute and a half played. Harden dishes to Beverly. Harden with a screen on Parker. Ariza with the bucket. Ariza's got his first three points of the game. They really can't allow him too many open looks like that. I mean, that's just inviting trouble. It's Ginobili with the drive. And no good to start the night, missing his first attempt there. Beverly, the pass to Ariza. Beverly with the ball. He's picked up by Parker. Harden outside, puts one up from 19, off the left rim and out. That's not a sight you see very often. I mean, he has a great feel for that jump shot, especially when he's open. Parker kicks to Leonard. Finish now to split it. Oh, yes, the turnaround. Now you got to love the footwork. How about that turnaround? And here in the first, approaching three minutes played. Everly with the ball. Pass to Ariza from outside the arc. And another three for Houston. Well, that shot was made possible.